And sagittal edge reduction guides can be a valuable aid when we're doing restorative dentistry. So we're going to make one out of our already formed and cured silicone putty matrix. We've made this over a cast of the patient's teeth, either a wax up or their original teeth. Now I'm going to use a 15 blade and I'm going to slice from the lingual in, aiming to split the matrix right between the canine and the premolar, assuming that I'm preparing from canine to canine on my restorative dentistry. I'm going to do one side and then the other. It can sometimes be helpful as you start to work through the material, especially if it's thicker than the dimension of the cutting surface of the blade, to sort of saw up and down or to use your fingers to spread the silicone so you can more effectively get the blade in. You want to cut all the way just to the facial side of the incisal edge of the teeth that you're going to be isolating in the reduction guide. Now I'm going to cut from the inside just on the facial side of the incisal edge all the way around from canine to canine on this guide. The blade may or may not be penetrating all the way through the other surface of the silicone. If it's going only part of the way through because of the depth of the material, once I get to the other side, I'm going to put some pressure on the lingual piece, spreading it away, and then going back and now separating completely. In some places, I may have already perforated through, but this will give me a clean cut so now I can separate. Now I can return the guide to the model so I can see that I accurately picked up the labial surface. So even when I do depth cuts, I like to have an incisal reduction guide to show me I have adequate room.